Good morning. morning. It's good to see each of you out of the Lord's house. Obviously, this week we've got several that are away on vacation. We've also got a lot of sick and uh, in the hospitals and not able to be here with us. And we we miss them and uh, want to lift them up in prayer this morning. But we also are thankful for those of you that are here who've made the decision to be here, looking forward to what the Lord's going to do. Let's be obedient to Him today as we collectively come together to worship Him. If you're able, if you would, rise to your feet. Brother John's going to come today and lead us in song. Let's worship the Lord together. All right. If you'll turn your brown hymn books to hymn number 21, kind of right at the bottom of the page there. We're going to sing it through a couple times. He is Lord. bow with me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you today, first and foremost, for being Lord. God, we thank you that you are who you say you are and that you've given us your word to show us that, that God, you're, that you are true, that you are faithful, that you are alive, that you are living, and that you are the, the I am, Father. That God, we thank you that that, that promise that one day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ, your Son, is Lord. And, and Father, we pray for those that don't know that and that don't realize that. And God, we pray that today would be the day for those here that may be struggling with that, that today would be their day of salvation, Father. We pray that you would be with all the, the hearts that are here today, Lord, before we bring our needs, God, we would bring our hearts for worship and, and gratitude and thankfulness for, for, who you, for who you are and all that you've done for us. And Lord, we ask that as, as we sing today, God, that our hearts would sing praise to you. Lord, we ask that, that you prepare Brother Andy as he comes to preach here shortly. God, that the words that you want us to hear would be the words that that you give him, Father, and that he'll have the freedom to preach the things that, that you want us to know and understand, and we pray that our hearts will respond in the right way. And God, we ask you would do great things here today, Lord, that we would be obedient to the leading of your Holy Spirit, and that we'll let you be Lord and, and be all that you are here today in our hearts and in our lives. Father, we thank you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you got your Bibles, you can go ahead and be turning with me to the Book of James, Book of James, chapter one, is where we're going to be picking back up this week. We started a new series going through the, the book of James last week. If you were here and if you weren't, um, you can find it online or um, on YouTube, Facebook, if, if you'd like to catch up later on this week. But we're going to be looking through the book of James for several weeks. Um, at least if the Lord wills for us to do that, that's the plan. And the book of James is, is one of my favorite books in the Bible. It's such a great example of, of practical application of how to live the Christian life. And this week we're talking about something that's it's really serious. <clears throat> and it's something <clears throat> that I relate to something that I, I love, obviously, very much. Y'all Y'all have seen, heard throughout the course of time me talk about fishing and, and me and the boys both, all, all three of us enjoy that. Matter of fact, this week we're fixing to go out of town 
Uh, Caleb and I will be gone from Tuesday all the way till Saturday. They have their state championship, and, and we're going to be out of town for that. And spending a lot of time on the water together with his partner and, and trying to compete in that. But this passage shows us that, that it, it's also something that, that Satan obviously likes to do. He, he likes to try for a big catch as well. You know, we'll be targeting some largemouth bass, but as we just found out, it's really easy to, to get hooked yourself. Today I brought a prop with me, and, and Bill found it a minute ago. So, <laughs> we, we got untangled with it. But this prop's one that's probably familiar to most people. Y'all probably seen something like this. And, and I want us to associate kind of this idea of, of temptation's hook. This Scripture Day is all about temptation. And, and I want you to understand, it starts off there in this passage, in, in, in verse 12, of chapter 1, it says, is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. So it starts off, and there's a couple things you need to understand about temptation, because I believe there's some misconceptions and some misunderstandings. The, the first thing is this. Temptation is not sin. We, we are tempted regularly. And, and Satan would like to convince us just because we're tempted that we have fallen in and that we're already stained and we've got this, we've got this big issue, we need to be guilty or we just need to continue in it or whatever. We'll get into those lies a little later. But just because we're tempted... That doesn't mean it's sin. To act upon temptation is sin. And the second thing that it points out that we need to see there, and this isn't in your notes. Kids got their notes this, this week back, and, and we'll get into those in just a second. But the second big thing that you need to understand before we really get into that is that God does not tempt us. Sometimes people think that God tempts us, or He wants us to, to face these temptations. Now, he, he allows us to face trials, but He is not trying to get us to sin. He doesn't want us to sin. He wants actually the opposite of that. He wants us to live without sin as much as possible. The Scripture tells us back in Matthew chapter 4 that Jesus was tempted. He faces all sorts of temptations and He shows us how to overcome those. But today I want us to, to see in this passage, I think the Lord wants us to see how Satan works. And what is at hand? Because this is a really important subject. So if you've got your Bibles here, look with me at verse 14. We're going to see our first couple of points in verse 14. It says, But each one is tempted when he's drawn away, drawn away by his own desires and is enticed. The, the first thing, that Satan wants to do is he wants to attack our desires. Let's be real, folks. We're, we're humans. We've got things that we uh, desire. It's in, in our fleshly sense, some things that we want. And, and, and you know, whenever I go out <clears throat> on the lake, there's different things. Sometimes I'm successful, sometimes I'm not. <clears throat> but, but I want to take with me something that I can get the fish to desire something it's going to want. If I throw out this bare hook or this hook and weight, I'm probably not going to go out and catch many fish. So, so what do I do? I, I go to the store and I, I try to find a bait, a lure. This one is, is called a creature bait. It's supposed to mimic like a bait, a, a, a bluegill or a crawfish. It's going to look like something that a fish wants to eat. So I'm going to take this bait and I'm going to make it look the most presentable way possible. I'm going to get it all prepared there. And then whenever I, I get it all ready, I'm going to go out to my fishing hole. And I, I, I warned Kelly that I was going to get him this morning, but I'm really not. But I, I'm going to take and I'm going to put it out there just at the spot where I think that fish is. And then you guess what I'm going to do? I'm not going to be content with it sitting there. I'm going to sit there and work it. 
I'm going to, and that's what you, yeah, y'all can laugh, but this is what you do. You got to work it. Why, why do you work that bait? You want to make it look good. You want it to look alive. You want it to look like something that's really, really tasty. You know what Satan does? He does the same thing. He, he knows what we want. What, what's he do? He, he baits our hook, and, and he does it with things like, like popularity. And we think some of these things are only kid things, and, and, and it partly is. But even as adults, what's he do? He tries to get us to, to gossip. Tries to get us to talk about other people so that it makes us look better and feel better about ourselves. Everybody wants to be liked. And he tries to get us to do things so that, so that everybody will like us. He, he tries to tempt us with possessions. When we're kids, we... Little kids, we oftentimes want toys, or now they want video games. And as you get into those teenage years, you want clothes and shoes. And now, as, as I've got one that's an older teen, we start thinking about automobiles and, and cars and, and all this. And, and you know what? It doesn't end for us adults. We still like our toys. They just cost a lot more. We, we, we get tempted to, to have the biggest and the best house, the biggest and the fanciest, this, that, and the other. We've got to have the newest and the greatest all the time. And, and that's what Satan does. He, he tries to tempt us with those things. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a house or a car in and of itself. But what does he want us to do? He wants us to become focused on it. He wants us to become glued on it. He wants it to become an obsession. And when we allow it to become an obsession, then that's what our goal is in life. I can remember as a kid, you know, having having summertime jobs. I learned to work in a tobacco patch and out on the farm from an early age. And before I was old enough to actually go out and and cut and spike and hang and do all that stuff, I could drop sticks and I could pick up leaves and do all that. And, and you save up that money so that you could have what you wanted later. And that's good. And I appreciate the work ethic I was I was taught at a young age. But you know, there's people today that become so consumed in work so that they can retain more possessions, can have this, that, or the other. There's people that's content with running other people down so that they can feel better about themselves and they can think that they're going to become something more. What's Satan do? He attacks our desires. And, 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 and so the first thing is he attacks our desires. The second thing in that same verse, it tells us also that he tries to entice us. That he tries to deceive us. That's the second point. Satan tries to deceive us. And, and, and saying entice us, he's, he's sitting there doing all this. And, and you know what? A lot of times I'm not content with just the bait. Another thing that I, I do a lot of times, and Drew loves this stuff. We, we, me and him went this last week to Del Hollow one night. And went fishing. And if you want to have a, a snip of this later, I'll let you. This is, whoo, it's garlic scented fish attractor. And I take that and I dip it down in there and it makes it glow on the tip and it makes it smell really good. I mean, it smells like 50 pieces of Texas toast in one little bottle. It's stout. But, but why do I do that? Because not only am I content with finding out what the fish's desire is, I, I want to entice it a little bit more. I want to add a little bit more to it. I want to make it a little extra good. Right? I want to make my bait a little bit better than what somebody else's has been. And, and, and that's what Satan does. Satan tries to build upon the desire that we have, and he tries to entice us, and he tells us things. He, he'll tell you, don't, don't worry, everybody does it. I'll tell you what the Bible tells me. It says broad is the road that leads to destruction. But it tells us that the narrow way is the way that leads into life. The, the Satan can tell you, don't worry, everybody does it. There's, there's going to be more people when this is all said and done on the, on the road, you know, ACDC, I think it was, sang the song called Highway to Hell. Unfortunately, that's what it is. There's going to be a highway leading to hell. But it's going to be a narrow country road leading to heaven. That's what the Bible says. And there's going to be few that's going to go that path. Satan says everybody's doing it. Don't worry. You can do it. It's no problem. That's a lie. 
Satan tries to tell us otherwise. He tries to tell us, you know what? God would want you to have your best. Not only does Satan tell lies, I've even heard preachers tell these lies. Oh, God wants you to have the best. God does want the best for you. That doesn't always mean God wants you to have what the world deems as best. See, there's a misconception of what best is. We think best means the most or the largest materially in in the world in which we live. We live in this materialistic society. You know what? I, I'm some of the most content, some of the most happy people that I know are people that have almost next to no possessions. One, one of my favorite people I, I've known in my entire life, and, and I, I may have mentioned her before, years ago, I had a public job, worked at a, at a place, a, a water company, utility company, and one of my responsibilities for about a year while I worked there was every day we had this older lady and she couldn't drive, never had a vehicle, never had a driver's license. So it was my responsibility every day to drive her home after work. She did a lot of the cleaning and taking out trash and stuff at the office. Just simple lady. And, and at first I thought, really, I've got to do this. But, but what I learned in those days of just driving her home every day is I got to learn the, the, the person that she was. And she was a godly woman, a, just a special lady. And, and, and this, she was about this tall, little skinny African-American lady that was, that was probably in her 90s by there, close to it, worked every day, loved the Lord. Before I went to work there, up until, I'm talking about, now this is in the early 2000s, she still lived in a house with a dirt floor. Had the cleanest house in White House. Her, her roof had, had started failing, so she had bought a simple little trailer. One of the things every week I had to do whenever I took her home was we had to stop at the grocery store, and I would help her pack in all of her groceries. They would have them ready for her whenever we got there. I'd help them pack them into her house. She didn't have a lot, but she was one of the most content people I ever met. Why? Because she didn't have all the distractions. Satan may have tried to entice her, but she didn't care. She didn't care about those things. She knew what was most important. It's really easy for us to get focused on the wrong thing. And that's what Satan wants to do. He, he throws the lure. He throws the bait. He, he gets it all where it smells good, it looks good, it tastes good. And then you know what happens next? Then you're going to find out the bad side to the bait. Look at verse 15. It says, And when our has conceived... It gives birth to sin. When desire has been conceived, it gives birth to sin. The, the third thing is that we become disobedient. See, the, Satan's throwing the lure out there. And, and, and you know what happens when the fish bites the lure? If everything works out right, he's going to find out real quick there's a hook inside. That hook's going to cause a reaction to that fish. He, he doesn't like to get hooked. I don't either. Every once in a while, I'll get a hook in me. There's been numerous times with uh, I coached the fishing team, I've had to actually go and get hooks that have been buried in kids and, and get them out for them and stuff. It, it's not an enjoyable experience, and I don't know that it really is for the fish either. And, and, and what we find out is all the sin that looks really good, it comes with consequences a lot of times. Satan... Those all, all these temptations. He wants us to become disobedient. And, and, and it's going to look good. It's going to, it's going to smell good. It's going to taste good. But it says that it becomes conceived. That it becomes kind of fully grown. It gives birth to sin. And when it's full grown, it's going to bring about something else. One, one of these Maybe one of the most awesome inventions of all time is the fishing hook. Obviously, that's the opinion of a fisherman. But actually, back in the 2000s, Forbes listed like the 25 or 50 greatest inventions of all time. Number 20 on their list was the fishing hook. You may not, one, one thing you may not know about a fishing hook if you don't fish, most every hook has something called a barb. 
And it's a little bitty thing that, that keeps, uh, it serves multiple purposes actually. One is whenever you go to set the hook, it, it increases the size of the hole a little bit when the hook goes in, but it serves even bigger purposes. This barb on the hook, this little bitty nick on this hook. This is why it's so hard to get a hook out if you get it down past the barb. It doesn't want to let something come off. It keeps grabbing. See, that's what, that's what sin does. That's what Satan does with sin. Typically, he's not, can, he's not okay with you just sinning one time. He wants to get you addicted to it. He wants it to be something that starts to become controlling. Whenever James says it becomes full grown, that's what it's talking about. See, this, this sin problem, and, and I don't care what it is. It can be inappropriate relationships with another person. It can be drugs and alcohol. It, it can be gossip. It can be pride. It can be a lot of things. But what does Satan want to do? He wants it to become consuming to us so that it becomes a priority in our lives. It, it causes us to become disobedient. It causes us to get to the point that ultimately point four is that we die in our sin. That's his desire. See, he wants us to die in our sin. If you see what it says there, it says when it's fully grown, it brings forth death. Listen, if you're maybe maybe you're younger, maybe you think, you know what, I got plenty of time, I don't gotta worry about death. I, I don't have to worry about what's coming down the road. Let me be really plain with you. We never know. I consider myself to be a pretty young person. Somebody that was one of my dearest friends growing up. One of the kids that was in the youth group with me. We were baptized together. She died this week. What, what I'd heard is she went to work one morning. She'd been out at the church camp that we're going to here in a couple weeks. The night before with her son. And she went to work the next morning and died. I think that she had a heart attack, whatever it was. Died the next morning. Young woman. Healthy. Didn't, didn't look like anybody that you would expect anything to happen. We don't know what's coming before us, but what we do have the responsibility of is to be prepared for it. Satan wants us to, to live in our sin and hopefully, eventually, he, he keeps us attached there is his mentality. And we know eventually, first of all, death was brought about by sin. But he's, it's talking about something more than just physical death here. He's talking about an eternal death. Now, I, we don't do it quite so much anymore, but whenever I was a kid, whenever I would go out with dad fishing, one of the big things that we like to, we like to target was crappie. And, and those crappie, if they were long enough, those things went right in the live well. They went in the boat, and whenever they got in the boat, see, that was the only, the first step. Because when we, had, when we got home, we had another task that was awaiting us. And every time we would come home, we'd be out crappie fishing. Me and Dad had our own jobs. Dad would always break out the electric fillet knife, and he had a really sharp uh, handheld knife for me. And he would fillet those fish and I would debone them and, and we would get those things and clean them up and get them ready for the frying pan. Ain't, ain't nothing better than fried crappie. I mean, that's, that's delicacy right there. Satan wants us he wants us to get in, in sin, get, it, get that hook buried in, so that what's He do? He hauls us to His boat. He wants us cooked. Sin comes with earthly consequences a lot of times. We, because of our sin, we, we may even get forgiveness, but we deal with earthly consequences of it. So what's He mostly worried about though? Satan's worried about the eternal ones. There is an eternal consequence to sin. Hear me today. It's in the joke. There's an eternal consequence to sin. And, and here's the hard truth. Guess what? Every one of us has got that problem. You're, you're, not, you're not any better than me. I am a sinner. 
And you are too. The Bible says each and every one of us has sinned. And there's an eternal problem that comes with that sin. It tells us that when we get wrapped up in sin, it comes penalty. Now, Satan wants us to believe a couple of things. He wants to tell us, you know what, just, just one time won't hurt. As a kid, he, he wants to tell us that. As we get older, he still does that. Don't worry, it won't hurt. You can try it once. You know what the next slide he tells us right after that is, though? Now that you've sinned, you might as well just keep on doing it. You've already done it, now you might as well keep on. That's, that's what he wants to do. And he'll drag us down to his level. Here's the final thing. Final point that I want you to see. And that is, as, as, as terrible as everything sounds, the Scripture tells us that we don't have to be content living in our sin. That we serve a catch and release God. We can be delivered. That's the final point. Look at what verse 16 says. It says, Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, of whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of His own will He brought forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of His creatures. James later on, and what we may see it later, he tells us to, to submit ourselves to God to resist the devil and that He'll flee from us. You know, the Lord's desire is not for us to get caught in our sin. He actually desired the opposite so much that the Scripture tells us that He sent His one and only Son. The one that He loved with all of His heart to come and to die in our place. That we might have the gift of eternal life. Listen to me. If you don't hear anything else, listen to what I have to say right now. Heaven doesn't happen by accident. You don't just go to heaven. You can't be good enough to do it. You, you can't put in enough money. You can't do enough good deeds. Hell happens. That's the truth. Hell happens because each one of us are destined for it unless something intervenes. Jesus is the way. He says He is the way, the truth, and the life that, that no man can come to the Father except by Him. He offers us that release. The Scripture tells us that all we have to do is believe it in our heart and confess it with our mouth. Have you done that? Have you trusted in Him have you truly put your trust and your faith in Him? You might say, you know what? I, yeah, I know that there's a God. So does the devil. The devil knows that there's a God. That isn't enough. You have to truly put your trust and your faith in Him. And then you have to accept Him as your Lord. And then you have to not be ashamed of it. You have to live for Him. That means that it's a daily commitment that we make. Have you done that today? Don't allow temptation's hook to take you to a place that you were not destined to go. Appreciate you being here today, being obedient, and I trust that you've been obedient. If the Lord's kind of burdened you with something, maybe you need to talk with somebody after service. Find me or one of the deacons. Grab us and we'd be glad to talk with you today, to pray with you, maybe answer questions you might have. Again, thank you for being here today. May God bless you this week.